Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. If you will enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments to help me boost this video. Thanks. Story 1 Entitled Stepmonster got herself banned from my wedding. My 28 m stepmother 49 Fahrenheit is a wannabe party planner. She has taken it upon herself to plan and host every party and holiday my dad's family has thrown since she married him. I never loved those occasions growing up she's controlling and gets upset if people complain about anything but humored her for my dad's sake. According to him, this helps her feel included. I'm getting married to my fiancé Jane 26 Fahrenheit in July. We got engaged in early 2021, but Jane ended up getting pregnant a couple months after that, and we decided to postpone the wedding to focus on our son for a while. So we've had a long engagement. My stepmother has tried to hijack our wedding plans from day one complaining, contacting our planner, showing up unannounced to Jane's dress appointments, etc. And we have repeatedly asked her to stop. Dad wants us to humor her, but she's clearly resentful of the fact that she's not hosting the wedding or being labeled mother of the groom in invitations. Besides our baby boy, we also have Luke 4N, Jane's paternal half-brother. She got custody of him a few months into our relationship after his parents died. I ended up moving in with them during the pandemic and have been in Luke's life since he was a baby. He doesn't call me dad and refers to us as his sister, and his opus, but we love him like a son. Stepmother, though, hates Luke. She accuses Jane of baby trapping her way into the family. That accusation only got worse after our son was born. My dad gets along with Jane and adores the kids, but stepmother demands him to refuse babysitting Luke so we don't leave the kids with them often. Instead, Jane's brother and Syl usually watch the kids for us as their children are close to ours in age. We had a thing last Sunday, and my Bill was out of town with his family. Jane's other siblings live in different cities, as well as my mom and sister. My dad agreed to babysit at our place, and we left. We came back to find both kids crying, stepmother screaming, and dad weakly trying to calm everyone down. Apparently, Luke had told stepmother that both he and our son were going to be our ring bearers, and she went ballistic. She screamed that she wasn't going to allow that because he wasn't family. She then made me need to include the trigger warning when he started crying. His lip is still split. She'd never gotten to this point before. We immediately banned her from our house and from our wedding. Dad is fuming and has said he's not going without her. He's also convinced half of his side of the family by severely downplaying what stepmother did to boycott the wedding as well. This includes my stepbrother, who fully agrees with his mother no matter how many times I try to tell him the truth. Me and Jane are refusing to budge, but many of my cousins who aren't coming anymore are asking us to reconsider. Pretty much all of Jane's family agrees with us, but one of her aunts has suggested that maybe stepmother is acting out because she doesn't feel welcomed by my family. I've honestly had it with my family enabling her behavior. I love my dad and really want him at my wedding, but I am more than willing to go and see if it means protecting my family. Story 2 Entitled Mother Blackmail's Daughter to Have a Relationship with Her I 30F have had a very rocky relationship with my mother dot 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 to begin with. My mother M is a mandatory reporter now, with is ironic since I was taken away from her and given to my father at 14 because of physical and sexual abuse happening in her care, and the physical at her hand. So the backstory, as an adult now, I have two children ages 11F and 12 meters. M has never babysat or kept them without my supervision. Although I have never kept them from seeing her, now that they are old enough, I do let them choose if they see her or not. They, however, are uncomfortable around her so they do not spend much time with her, nor will I force them to. I have never fully cut her off but I am low contact with them because of continued emotional abuse and gaslighting towards me. Two nights ago, M called me while she was intoxicated and on top of basic yelling at me, she was also bringing up my traumas and triggered a PTSD attack. And while I was having the attack and my partner tried to calm me down, and began claiming she has never done anything wrong, it wasn't her fault, and told me I should just shut up and get over it already. And, after beginning the conversation with you are such an amazing mother, 
and I love you. She told myself and my partner that I am a terrible mother and that I don't love my partner and moved on quickly to accusing me of being on drugs. Her reasoning was that I got so upset out of nowhere during the conversation and being on drugs would be the only thing that could explain that behavior. You know dot 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 not the PTSD attack while my own mother screaming at me to shut up get over it, that I am a terrible mother, and I don't love my partner. So I hung up and texted her to never speak to me again. So I decided to blackmail me by telling me she is a mandated reporter. And if I didn't start having a closer relationship with her, and make my children come see her more, and let her keep them by herself, she would report me to DHS, and said that she would say that I am on drugs, and being incompetent to care for my children because I have epilepsy dot 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 from a head injury I sustained in her care as a child. The allegation is completely false. The only thing I am on is epilepsy medication prescribed by my doctor. But just in case, I bought a full spectrum drug test, took it in front of a witness, took a picture of the results and clean and have the entire thing on video, making sure it's not showing anything inappropriate. I am perfectly capable of taking care of my children, and they are both healthy, happy, and well-rounded. On top of all of this, Anne has also stated she will take me to court to get grandparents' rights to get my children whether I like it or not. So Anne is literally blackmailing me to make myself, and my children have a relationship with her that we do not want. I don't want to put my children through that, but I also don't want to put them through DHS investigations and interviews, and a whole ass court case, which could end in them being forced to see her anyway. I am terrified she will treat my children the same way she treated me and I have been a mama bear, to try to keep anything bad that happened to myself, as a child to never happen to them. So I am gathering evidence of her blackmail, evidence that I am a perfectly capable mother, evidence that my children are cared for emotionally, financially, physically, and medically. And on Monday, I am going to go to my local DHS office and let them know about everything going on. Hit the jump on him myself and then go no contact. Details. She told me this via a drunken phone call the blackmail. She accused me of drug use via text after I texted to no longer contact me. Her exact text message was get off the drugs. Can't help your kids if you're not coherent. Yes, she used the wrong ear and then opus I'm a mandated reporter. So if you don't want to visit, or call. I can't change that but. All of these were after I said do not contact me ever again. She says she knows I'm doing all this to punish her for something she didn't do. And that I am playing my partner. But he didn't buy into her BS and is being very supportive. Story 3. Entitled Mom Tries to Steal My Books. This happened two weeks ago at our local mall. Me and my mom and her sister aunt from Germany were going to our local mall to do some more mass shopping. My aunt and mother had already done theirs, and they wanted to take me I was sick, and had injured my leg, so I couldn't go before to shop with my aunt for myself, as she was departing a few days later. So third day we were at the last shop before going home, and have all of our shopping bags out sitting on some chairs nearby, as we were looking at some things for my aunt to take to Germany like Florida, and Miami fridge magnets. I was helping them are because my aunt couldn't decide which to pick. And in the corner of my eye, I see some kid probably 13 minus 14 taking a look at my books, which were 16 plus. So I had to go over and ask him to keep those down. I was skeptical at first, but he saw me look at him and asked me if these were mine. I said yes, and he was sorry and kept the books back. He was quite nice. We started to talk about some stuff like football, soccer. I'm from the UK and FIFA mobile. He went to his mom and she came over. I assumed she was going to ask me where I got the books from and that will be it. Boy, was I wrong. M. Hi, where did you get these? B. At bookstore down on the next floor. M. Ah, uh, could I possibly have them by any chance? She asked me this with the give it to me or else kind look. Me? No, I bought them with my own money. And I don't think I can give it to you for free, maybe if you pay for them. The total was around $150, cause I bought lots of big and bulky books. Um, well, maybe I could give you these in exchange. She points at some Nike shoes in her bag, and I see the kid alarmed by this. And Kate, mum, I wanted those. Let's just get the books downstairs. Um, shut up, let me talk. Me, ma'am, the books I have are 16 plus, 
and I don't think he can read them. They have content that might not be suitable for him. And, oh, that's fine. I can just tear those pages out. At this dialogue, me and the kid just exchanged a look of pure concern. Me, ma'am, I'm sorry, but I will not give them no matter what. Seeing as you're gonna tear pages from the book, you might as well just get him some books more sorted for this age. And just shouts insults at me at this point because I just called her kid immature and sensitive and goes on and try to grab the bag, which I was holding, from me, though security spots her and asks her if there's a problem. At this point, my mum and aunt have come over as well. Em, this boy is trying to steal these books I got for my son. Mum, I'm sorry, but I bought these for my son. And I will not give them away to anybody, let alone someone who is shouting insults at my child. Security, to Em, ma'am. Do you have the receipt for these books, as well as your ID to ensure the name matches? And started to turn red, and started acting like we stole the receipt we showed it, and my mom's driving license to the security. Security, ma'am, I'm gonna need you to leave the store, or we will escort you out. She leaves and the kid says sorry to me. We became friends on Discord, and chat often. Story 4 Entitled Mom Thinks Her Son is entitled to my merchandise. At 22 NB and finishing up my last semester of college and decided to sell some keychains and vinyl stickers I made at my school's spring market. I laser cut these keychains and put slogans, royalty free icons, and some of my own personal designs on them. The keychains are pretty reasonably priced. Five dollars minus eight depending on the complexity of the design and usually sell like hotcakes at the market. I'm a big Minecraft fan, so I make a lot of creeper keychains, which are pretty popular with the younger demographic. I was at my stall at the market, and was finishing up a few transactions with customers, when a boy, probably age 10 minus 13, snags one of my more detailed and larger Minecraft keychains off of my display. I call after him and tell him he needs to pay for the keychain. He continues to run away, and I flag over the market coordinator, John, to report the kid. Eventually, John finds the kid, and tells him he needs to pay for the keychain. The kid, followed by his mom, makes their way over to my stall. I tell the mom that her kid stole the keychain, and it either needs to be returned or paid for. The mom immediately begins going off about how ridiculous and embarrassing the whole ordeal is. Not only did I scream at her son, but I sent John over to make him pay, embarrassing him in front of the whole market. The mother exclaims that her son is going through therapy because he has onset social anxiety disorder as well as onset agoraphobia. She proceeds to look down at my shoes and see that I have a creeper on my Crocs and says that I could relate to the love of the video game and cut her son some slack because that's the honorable thing to do for a child in need. I told her that I would be happy to give him a discount, but I could not afford to give these away for free as I used the profits to pay for my college tuition. I also told her that I sympathize with her son, but social anxiety is not an excuse to be a thief. This seemed to set her off, and she began screaming at me saying her son is not a thief. At this point she was scaring customers away, and people were actively walking away from the booths near mine to avoid the conflict. I tried to keep a level head, and at this point her son looked like he wanted to shrivel away. I felt bad for the kid. No wonder he has social anxiety with a mom who was willing to make a scene like this. The kid tried to give me the $8 that the keychain cost, but the mom took it out of his hand and shoved it in her pocket. Eventually, John came and asked her to step away from the booth, as she was disturbing customers. She ended up leaving, and the kid paid for his keychain. I ended up throwing in a free sticker to apologize for him having a mother like that. Overall, I ended up selling out of my stock and had an uneventful rest of the market. Some onlookers even remarked that I handled the situation pretty well. Needless to say, I will probably be switching to online sales for the foreseeable future. Story 5 Entitled Parent Wants Mr. Beast Burger When Restaurant Doesn't Serve It In-House so, this isn't my story. A friend of mine allowed me to share this story. So, my friend, Ariel 18F at the time used to work at a Red Robin, which is a burger restaurant in the States. It was a little after lunch rush, 
when my friend encountered the entitled parent of the story, but who we'll call Karen. Now, Ariel's beside me, so I'll let her take over. As I stated, it was a little after the lunch rush when Karen and her son come in. And what used to be called an SP, or a service partner, I bring your drinks and food. I wait and I eventually get their order. They're sitting in the bar area, which is no longer exclusively for adults. At the time, which I can see through this little nook that leads from the main area to the back work area, she orders two waters, one for her and one for her kid, both adult sized. I go over and bring the waters and then I leave. She looks at the menu and the waiter goes over to take the order. It starts off like normal. I should quote, as it's in the middle of a shift change, I was working a double, I was still there, with few customers. Apparently the child wanted a Mr. Beast burger, which we do make. But since we're only partners with Mr. Best, we cannot sell the burgers in-house, and it is for online orders. Only entitled Karen, after learning this from the waiter, calls for a manager to come over and deal with this. Our manager at the time was the head manager of this store. So, he goes over and he starts talking with her now. I can't hear anything, but me and the two other workers who are in the back are kind of just watching through the tiny nook. Eventually, he comes back. The woman is very upset, because we won't make the burger in store for her. And her son. And they say they will leave after this. We think that is the end of it, but we are also wrong. As her kid got up and goes out to the main lobby area. The mom stops for a moment, and then the next thing we know, we see her pick up both waters, which they had ordered but not drink from yet, and dump them right onto the table. She then calmly walked out. We had no idea what caused the woman to think doing that was a good idea, but she did it. We quickly rushed over to the table, saving the tablet on the table. We never did see her again, which was lucky as our manager was very upset. That scene happened. Story 6 Mom gets very upset that I'm independent and don't always take her advice. And 23 divided by F, and my mom is 54. I am the only child of my parents and have always been close with both of them. I graduated college in May 2022 and started dating my current boyfriend in April 2022. I've been working as a teacher since August 2022. I have become very independent from making my own money to living with my boyfriend. I feel like this upsets and angers my mom, and I feel like she wants to control me even though I am a responsible adult. Since October, I have had a plethora of medical issues which haven't resolved from a general surgeon's intervention a few times. I asked the surgeons back in November if seeing a specialist would have been beneficial, but they did not think so at the time, so I followed their orders. The whole time my mom was very opinionated about the whole thing and has always lacked trust in doctors for whatever reason. She was upset and still reminds me to this day despite it being March that I should have advocated for myself more and seen the specialist constantly making me feel bad about it and how I prolonged any healing. I explained that I obviously can't go back in time and have to make the best of the situation now, but it's never a sufficient answer. Another thing with her is drinking. IBF 27 divided by M and I are clearly of legal drinking age, and like to enjoy a drink or two with our meals. Neither of us, nor any family members, have struggled with alcohol or made any poor decisions regarding drinking. She constantly grills me about how she doesn't see the need for us to have a drink so often, and has even said the same to, and about my half-brother and his wife. She tries to say that drinking is impeding me from healing from my medical issues, despite getting a green light from the doctor. Today I explained to her how she does not have to understand or support every decision I make, and back in January I asked her to please only give advice if, and when I ask for it. If I don't take it, she gets frustrated, passive-aggressive, and says no one cares or I know I'm the awe about her and her opinion. She even started crying because my grandparents and brother don't always take her advice that she gives without anyone asking then took that out on me too. She told me today she is going to give advice, and her opinion regardless, because she's my mother, and can, and tried to make it seem like I said they have not supported me whatsoever. Once I stood up for myself, and told her that I don't owe them an explanation for my decisions, and assured them that I am responsible, she hung up. I'm in a loss right now. I'm sure she thinks that because I'm 23, have a job, and a BF who is older that I think I know it all. 
but I'm tired of all of this. Any advice from anyone experiencing anything similar? 